Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and in today's video I would like to tell you a little bit about how Python decides whether values are true or false and also how the AND and the OR operators work in Python. And that seems perhaps like a very basic topic, but I think you will find that even if you're a moderately advanced Python programmer, that there is more to it uh, than you might think to how Python works with true and false values. But first things first, I recently surpassed 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, so I think I finally made it. I'm a, I'm an influencer. Mama made it. And on that note, let's get back to Boolean logic in Python. So what you see here is a very basic if statement. It's, it's, we're asking the question, is it the case that two times two equals four? If two times two equals four, then print out, this is true. Otherwise print out, this is false. If we run this, of course, we get the exact thing that we might expect, right? We get, this is true. So we're here, we're asking, this is an example of a very sensible question that we're asking Python. We can also ask, is it the case that two times three equals four if we run this? Of course, here on the right-hand side, you see, no, this is false. Um, this is easy to understand. But what is a bit strange is that we can also ask questions to Python that don't seem to be questions, valid questions at all. For example, we can ask things like if non. What does it mean to ask if non? Nevertheless, if I run it, oh, Python will give us an answer and it will actually say this is false. This seems to be a nonsensical question, but somehow Python nevertheless interprets it and gives us an answer. We can also ask if 42 which is allegedly the answer to the, the meaning of life. If I ask if 42, then Python feels that that is true. And we can even ask very bizarre things, like for example, if, uh, if an empty set. If I run this, Python feels that an empty set is false. What is happening here? Well, Python forces a truth value, true or false, onto every value. So we can ask of every value whether it is true or false. Whether that is a useful thing to do is another matter, but we can do it. And it is easy to think of this kind of if statement as essentially doing the following. So it applies the bool function to anything that we might pass it. So if we're asking if 42, then what we're really doing is asking if bool 42, right? If I run this, uh, uh, you will also see that it outputs this is true. So basically Python takes any value, puts it into the bool function, and then determines whether it is true or false. So what kind of rules determine whether a value is true or false in Python? Let's start with, uh, let's start with numbers. So if I ask bool 42, I type it in directly here into the console, Python will say it's true. If I ask bool zero, um, uh, Python will say it is false. This is a general property of numbers in Python. So Python feels that every non-zero number is true and every zero number is false. So let's make a list here. What is true and false in Python? Uh, something is false. Things that are false are false. Um, the first thing of course that is false is the actual false value that is a bool. Then when it comes to numbers, the number zero is false for int or float. Any non-zero number will be true, including num, not a number, and inf, infinite numbers. They're all true, according to Python. So how about strings? Um, let's say bool a string. Oop. Python will say that's true. If we give it bool an empty string, Python will say that's false. Again, that's a general rule. So any, the empty string in Python will be considered false. Any non-empty string will be considered true. What is else? What else might we encounter? Well, we might actually encounter non. Is, so how does Python? Python feels that non is false. So non is a special type that has only one value, non, and it is always false. And then there are things like lists and tuples and other iterables, so things that have a length, that contain multiple other objects. How does Python feel about that? Well, actually, just like it feels about the string. So if we ask bool, for example, and then the list one comma two, Python will say that it's true. This is not because there's something true in the list or anything like that. It is true because there are, it is a non-empty list. 
If we ask Python whether an empty list is true, execute it, Python will say it is false. Okay, um, and the same will be true for things like sets and, and, and tuples, etc. So the empty, uh, well, things with zero length, zero length are false. And those are things like uh, lists or tuples, etc. So some things don't have a length, right? A number in Python doesn't have a length. But as soon as something has a length, for example, a list, and that length is zero, then according to Python, it is, uh, it is false. And otherwise, it is true. Then finally, there is a special case, you might say, because objects, classes, can determine for themselves, and I will not show how, but in, by implementing special functionality, a class can determine for itself whether it, is, whether it is true or false. And that means that basically, if you're starting to work with custom objects, Anything goes. It just depends on the on the implementation of the objects. But generally speaking, a well-behaved class that has been designed with the principles of Python in mind follows this general rule, right? For example, when I developed a data matrix, which is like a data structure with multiple things in it, I designed it in such a way that it evaluates to false if it's empty and true if it's not empty, because that, that is what you're supposed to do. But in principle, I could have made any kind of arbitrary decision. So um, custom objects... Uh, decide for themselves, so to say. But you will not encounter that very often in practice. In most cases, uh, you will work with these kind of standard values and they have a very well-defined true or false value. Okay, so um, now we know when things are true or false. Let's take a look now at actually how the most important uh, Boolean operators AND and OR work in Python. So let's say that we have A is true, is false, B is true, and C is again false. And um, I will just load these in. I will say, yep, load. And then I will, let's go here, and I will say, okay, print uh, A and B and C. Yep. That is false, of course, because the AND operator is defined logically such that if, there, if you ask the AND about a collection of things and one of these things is not true, then the result of the AND is false, right? Um, and of course, for or it's the other way around. So print A or B or C will actually say that it's true. Uh, why? Well, because there is one true value here, the B. So A or B or C is also true, right? So that is the kind of behavior that you might expect. But things become a little bit more erratic if we actually start using uh, values that are not Boolean. Or well, they are Boolean in the sense that according to Python, everything is true or false, but they are not immediately Boolean. So say, for example, Boolean actually just means it's a special term referring to logical things that are true or false. So say that A is the empty list. We know now that an empty list is false, according to Python, but it is not directly the value false. And B is a string that says this is true. That evaluates to true. Right? And say that C will be none. That evaluates to false. Up, and I'll select this and run it. Now we have three things, and it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to ask whether they are all, whether they are and, or whether they are or, right? That seems a bit strange, seems non-applicable to these values, but nevertheless, we can do it. I can say A and B, or let, let, let me print it out, print A and B and C, and Python will get faithfully give an answer, and what it will actually say is an empty list. So it will not say true or false, it says an empty list. Why? Well, because the empty list is the first thing that we're asking the end from, so to say. It's the, it's the A here. And now, here is the general rule. And, how does AND work? Let's first say, okay. How do AND and OR work? Up. Let's start with AND. AND. And will give gives re, evaluates or gives the first false value. Our first false value is a here. If there are no, if all values are true, or the last value if all values are true. So say that a had been true and b had been true and c had been true, then and would have evaluated to c. But now it 
which just gives us the first false value, and that happens to be A. Think about how this actually, at the end of the day, exactly accomplishes what you want AND to accomplish. So it is a very good implementation of AND, it's just a bit strange when you think about it. And how about OR? So if we say print A or B or C, it says this is true. What is that? Well, that's actually the B. Up here, this one. Why? Well, the logic of OR is such that it gives the first true value, and that's actually B, right? Because A is false and B is true, so it evaluates to B. What happens if there are no true values? Well, it does actually the mirror image of the OR. It says OR, it gives the last value if all values are false. Um, so that is how A and an OR work. They do not do some kind of direct Boolean comparison and give you a true or a false. They work based on this kind of weird logic that you see here. But at the end of the day, it will always give you something that is true if the end of the things is true. And it will give you something that is true if the end of the, of the OR of the things is... Uh, uh, it will do, rewind, it will do exactly what you expect AND and OR to do. Uh, but the way it does it is a bit strange. So let's take a look at a few special cases. Say, for example, that we turn B into the empty string. Then we have three values that are all false, right? I load this. And now let's say print A or B or C. Up. This is none. Why? Well, following the logic of OR, if all values are false, it will give you the last value, and that is the C, none. According to the logic of AND, if we now do the AND, print A and B and C, up, it will give us the empty string. Um, because it will give us the first false value, and that is the empty string. Now, if we change this to a set of values that are all true, so for example, one, right, this uh, evaluates to true, the non-empty string one also evaluates to true, and say that we set C to the number one, which is also true, up, reload this. And now I do it again, print, a or B or C, it will actually give us the string, uh, the list with one in it, so A. Why? Because OR gives the first true value, and that is actually A. And now you already know what AND is going to do. Print A and B and C. Up. Will actually give us the number one here, the C. Why? Because AND gives us the last value if all values are true. Okay, so what have we seen in this video? We've seen actually that any any kind of object, any kind of value in Python is a truth value, truth value, either true or false. And it is such that false things are false, the bool false is false, zero, the number zero is false, the empty string is false, none is false, things that have a length but the length is zero are false, and custom objects that have been decided, designed such, so, such that they are false are also false, and anything else is true. That is how Python thinks. Um, and then we've taken a look at AND and OR. And in daily life, you can use AND and OR exactly the way you are used to, right? They do some kind of Boolean comparison. That's how you should think about them. But if you actually look at how they are implemented, what they do is they return some kind, some element of the things that you are comparing with the AND OR operator or the OR operator, depending on the uh, following the rules that I've outlined here. So that's a bit strange, but it does the job very well. Now, thank you very much for your attention. Um, and uh, happy coding. <laughs>